This is according to the pristine teaching of Islam, according on. to the pristine teaching of Islam, guided by our Noble Allah, Muhammad, according to the pristine teaching of Islam, and according to the pristine teaching of Islam, guided Kindness by our Noble Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and justice. The aim Kindness of the week to all is to study creatures. the leadership principles and the techniques employed by Sokoto Jihad the leaders of the week in the formation is of a peaceful the and harmonious society the of the 19th century employed and by Sokoto are Jihad leaders to today's governors in the formation of a peaceful in our society and harmonious society while of the 19th the century ob and the relevance of this to today's governors for the week are in one, reshaping our to society explore while the leadership values the applied by the so called caliphate this lead for the week that is and one plug bearers to explore and other leaders the leadership in society reform by the so called caliphate which we lead their needs that today. is and they are plug bearers too and other leaders the method in society employed by the jihad governors leaders which we the plug bearers their needs today and other leaders in reviving too to examine the, the methods Political, by the jihad educational, the plus and social economic and other leaders in the of the caliphate. The religious to political, identify some works of the jihad leaders and social leadership economic aspects and on how of they the were caliphate. applied in the practice to identify for the promotion of, of the jihad leaders and the development of leadership of the society and on how for they were applied to identify in the practice ways and methods for the promotion of, of applying this and the development in solving of the present challenges Four, to identify five ways to further and methods clear of applying these principles in and the policies against the challenges so five, and also to mobilize to the youth in particular as you can see them here and the in policies thousands, against the so the scholars the and also to mobilize the youth in particular as you can see them here in promoting in this leadership the scholars the and traditional methods. and the political leaders finally this year's week includes the following. One, a two-day intensive workshop, which we call Dora, on three main books of Sheikh Osman bin Fodwe, Abdullah Fodwe, and Sultan Muhammad Bello. Two, a symposium, which was part participated by nine institutions of higher learning in Sokoto, and of course, quiz competition for the younger ones, including the Almajris, as well as essay writing competition in Arabic, in English, and in Hausa language, all on the works of the Sokoto Jihad leaders. There was also a poetry competition in Arabic, in English, Hausa, and Fulful Day languages. They were all organized for the Muslim youth in secondary schools, in tertiary institutions, as well as youth outside the formal system of education on some selected themes of the Sokoto Caliphate. Your Excellencies, Your Eminence, Your Royal Fathers, I mean, your, uh, our Royal Fathers, and other distinguished personalities here are present. There were live programs on NTA, Rima Radio, Rima FM, Garukwe FM, Alu Yagode FM, Bishan FM, Caliphate MF, FM, Royal FM, and some other media outlets, including live streaming on Facebook. The presence of the Dr. Zakir Naik has added color to the 10th Osman Podio week by televising some of the lectures to over 100 million listeners of, across the world. Lectures, lectures and symposiums were also organized, as well as night preaching was organized in six districts, namely Yabo, Kilgori, Tundai, Shuni, Dengadi, and the Bodinga, to also give our brothers and sisters in the rural communities across the local government sense of belonging. The presentation all highlighted the essence of the fear of Allah applying justice in leadership and governance as well as mass education as panacea to the challenges of insecurity, poverty, and all forms of the challenges we are facing today in our societies. 
and the need for everyone to contribute his own quota in his respective capacity. In the same vein, it's observed that the continued occupation and colonization of Palestine by the Zionist forces, as well as the ongoing genocide and ethnic cleansing happening in Gaza, where, where hospitals and innocent civilian buildings are targeted for destruction uh, using internationally, um, are targeted for destruction using internationally banned weapons is a clear act of injustice which every Muslim, every Muslim and any peace-loving individual should stand against. So here also the planning committee and members of Islamic organization will stand against it. We therefore call on the Nigerian government, the champion of anti apartheid rule in Africa, in the 80s and the 90s, to severe its diplomatic relationship with apartheid regime, that is Israel, as done by Bolivia. We are grateful to His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr, CFR MNI, the Amirul Mumini, and his council members for their support and guidance in planning, developing, and conducting the 10th edition of the Osman Fodio Week edition. We are particularly grateful for all your support and bearing the logistics of our keynote speaker, Dr. Zakir Naik, and his son, as well as his entire team, who also delivered yesterday a lecture at Osman Ampudu University. And today, Dr. Zakir Naik equally will deliver the most awaited lecture in Sokoto today, inshallah. Equally, we thank the institutions, we thank institutions for your continued support in the Sheikh Osman ibn Fodui, as well as the distinguished personalities who were able to help us in all uh, our needs, uh, particularly in conducting the lectures and other activities. We use this opportunity as well to thank His Excellency, the Governor of Sokoto State, Elijah Ahmad Aliyu, for hosting Dr. Zaki Naik yesterday and for giving us the enabling environment, including this center, to host the 10th Osman for the week. Jazakallah khair. I also want to believe that everyone that is here, we may not be able to mention your name one by one, but we thank you. We all believe that all of us have come together under the ayah of Allah, ta'awanu alal birri wa taqawa wa la ta'awanu alal ithmi wal udwan. Before I conclude, it is imperative to on behalf of the organizing committee also, thank the Emir of Zazzaw, who is to chair this occasion, and other distinguished personalities, which I may not mention now, but His Eminence will mention them when their time comes. However, it may suffice to say, we thank all our royal highnesses, the traditional rulers, our leaders of every uh, nooks and, and crannies that have found their way to this occasion. We thank you, the youth, for keeping the flag flying. And we also thank all the media houses and all the ulama and other distinguished personalities that has helped us. It is not easy. We have started this week almost three weeks ago. And we thank you for your support. And finally, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the almighty, to reward whoever contributed in the success of this year's Usman Fodio Week and who helped Islam and the Muslim everywhere, anywhere, and at any time. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Excellencies, permit me to invite His Royal Highness, the Chairman of the occasion, and the Imam of Zadzaw, Ahmad Nukmali, for his remarks. Allah yate makisarki.
as we are aware he is the 19 emir of the zoo and direct descendant of Mala Musa Ba Mali, known as Mala Musa Zaria, one of the black bearers of Sheikh Osman bin Fodio. He was former Nigerian ambassador to the Kingdom of Thailand with concurrent accreditation to Myanmar. Allah Tema Kisarki. Auzi billahi minashaitani rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Your eminence The father of all And the sultan Of Sokoto Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr The third Your excellencies The governor of uh, Kebu state Deputy governor of Zamfara state Um the representatives or the halifas of the flag bearers, I can see the Malam Dendo of Nupe, I can see the Naguamase of Kontogora, and a host of other representatives of you know, the flag bearers of this um, revived caliphate. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. This way, eh? Um, permit me to stand on the existing protocol because I've seen quite a number of people here that I cannot um, recognize one after the other. So apologies to all of you, please. Um, yesterday, when I arrived in Sokoto here around half past four in the evening, um, I went straight to the accommodation provided. And while I was at the accommodation, I requested for a meeting with the, um, with the representatives of the Mahajrun al Ansar which was um, established. That is a committee or an association of the families of those that actually participated in the Battle of Dabkin Koto that led to the formation of this capital, which I had been a member for many years, representing my great-grandfather, Malam Musa Bumali, the flag bearer of Zazo. Uh, we had a terrific meeting. Wazir in Sokoto was there, Sarifika, uh, Sarifika, um, Kevin Jega, and a host of others were all there. We had a very beautiful meeting, and I was very pleased you know, that I came home because of this uh, celebration of the 17 years of the bad Sultan Muhammad Sada Abu Bakr. Um, I, and it also reminded me, you know, that this is how it was 200 years ago. We, our great grandfathers rallied around Sheikh Osman bin Fodio, you know, as his disciples and contemporaries, which led you know, to the formation and establishment of this caliphate that we are all proud of and uh, we cherish. So it goes without saying, we are here in Sokoto today to renew our allegiance, you know, to the Sultanate, to renew our allegiance, you know, to the Sultan. And uh, Oh, and also to see our acquaintances and relations. Fortunately for me, uh, my, my mother came from this uh, uh, city and came from the house of the Mfodio. So it is homecoming. For and at the same time, 
I feel very proud that Ace Unupe is here. And we all converge at about 9 p.m. You know, at the Sultan's Palace, you know, to congratulate him for coming this far and also to congratulate him for leading us right because the leadership qualities he has uh, has gone beyond, you know, the Sultanate of Sokoto or even the shores of Nigeria. So we are very, very proud of his accomplishments. We are very proud of... what he has achieved in these 17 years, and most especially, you know, the uh, publication and also translation of most of the books or works of Sheikh Usmanu, Muhammad Bello, Abdullahi Fodio, and Nana Asmau. So, Your Eminence, we are very grateful for what you have done and what you are doing and what you will continue to do. And we pray to Almighty Allah to spare your life in good health, you know, to continue to lead us right. And I can assure you all that all the flag bearers, you know, of the Emirates, of former Emirates of Northern Nigeria are proud of your leadership. <laughs> Equally, uh, let me also thank you, Your Eminence, for inviting the speaker whom we have met yesterday for the first time. We only see him on television. And uh, I'm so delighted that we're here today to listen to this um, um, an international you know, scholar of repute you know, to speak to us so that at least we can be reminded of our obligations. So with this, I'd like to say a big thank you for giving me the opportunity to chair this occasion today. I'm very proud of this. And also a big thank you, Your Eminence, for inviting us, you know, to come over to Sokoto, you know, to, um, to socialize with you. We had a terrific dinner yesterday and also today, you know, to be with all these dignitaries, men and women uh, in this uh, hall. So I wish us a very successful deliberation today, and also I wish all of us good stay here, and while going back, I wish each and every one of us a safe journey back to our respective destination. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, His Highness Ambassador Ahmad Nuhuba Mali, Emir of Zazaw. Thank you once again. Um, with that, I would like to invite Dr. Abdullah Jafar, who is going to lead for the presentation of the panel of quiz and poetry competitions and distribution of prizes. Dr. Abdullah Jafar. Yes, Doctor, you are invited. All protocols duly and respectfully observed. Uh, the winners of the quiz, the quiz essay uh, symposium and poetry competitions were conducted. But because of the time factor, we'll only call the winners of the quiz competition. 
Uh, I would like to invite uh, Sultan Hassan Damazu Islamia, who took the first position in a quiz competition. Sultan Hassan Damazu Islamia School shall come forward. The second position is Sultan Atayur Ahmad Secondary School. So come forward, please. And the third position is Fajrul Islam Operini Islamia School. They shall come forward, please. MashaAllah, Barakallah. Muna Ayata Makarantang Islamia and Sultan Hassan Damma Azu, Supito. Dalla Kafin Yakaraba. Ana bad da umurni. Chua do Allah do one da awurin nanya jai. Do one da awurin nandong Allah jai. Do one da agave and projected in nandong Allah jai. Arage da awurin nan. Thank you for your compliance. Makaranta da tayin nabiyu. Ita che Sultan Atahir Ahmad Secondary School. Sultan Atahir Ahmad Secondary School. They shall come forward. Makarantana Uku Fajr al-Islam Oparini. They shall come forward, please. Ana Kiran Watanda Suka Samana Sara. Amada Makarantas to the Soram Makarantini. I need to eat Babu Sha'a, Babu Guta, Babu Kurura. Ya kamata agwode ma Allah, adede lo ke chinda aka ambachi ka yina sara. Don haka, komu che, ma sha Allahu barak Allah, kokuma meita kabir, Allahu akbar. Be kamata mu yishu ba. Dala makarantini mku ake jira ku hanza rita kuzu. They will receive their prizes at the other side of the hall. The other side of the hall, please. Chanza aji. Chanza suji. Your Excellencies, Your Eminence, I present to you the winners of the quiz competitions uh, for the 10th Sheikh Usman bin Fodua week. Uh, 1445 after Hijra.
Fajr al-Islam ko fardi ni Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Muna ba mai alfarma hakuri da sauran shugabannin mu dake nan game da wannan tsari na kacici kacici da kuma insha'i da symposium da sauran abubuwan da ake saboda lokaci za a takaita kawai zuwa ga mutum makaranta guda wadda ta yi na daya a wajen kacici kacici wadda yake ita ce Sultan Hassan dan Mu'azu da na dai da na biyu da na uku daga cikin su za su amshi kyauta daga mai alma sarki musulmi da mai girma governor na jahar kebi da kuma jahar sokoto in Allah ya yarda saboda haka ina malam bashir bismillah eh Sultan Hassan dan Mu'azu Islamiya Daud eh eh su su kai na daya bismillah to muna kira ga mai girma gwamnatin jihar Kebi ya ba ko wani dai daga cikin su kyautar laptop wanda Allah ya cishe su ɗana to to insha Allah na na farko zai amsa daga mai girma gwamnatin jihar Sokoto inji na ce gwamnatin Kebi ya ce gwamnatin jihar Sokoto heavily represented by SSD na jihar Sokoto Malam Muhammad Ben Lusifawa
Bismillah, Bismillah, Miraham Abi Jekaiga, Kyotome Aroma Sakim Musiminan, Nawanan Hazak Adokai, Allah Sakad Al Hedi. Say Migirma Gumnan Jaha Kebi, Muna Gudia Migirma Gumnan Jaha Sokoto. Masha Allah Barakallah Kau tamai alhamdulillah Serikim muslimi kenan Mekir maagum na jahat kebi yake gabatar wa Kau enan Alibay da shakai hazak Sayyana karshi Mekir ma mbute mekir maagum na jahat Zampara Shima ze wa kilchi Gum na jahat zampara Dome meek awan na kau ta Zua ga wa enna ya randa shakai Nasara achiki wa na kachichi kachichi Na wa na shikara Mungkin mah gom nama nak godia, kuma obeng kiji Allah sakat alhidi. Mungkin mah sakit muslim mana godia Allah sakat alhidi. Your Excellencies, permit me to invite the guest speaker for the day, an erudite scholar, Dr. Zakir Naik, for his lecture. Bala masu recording anche kuye hamkuri kutanja ba ya jehe don Allah kuye hamkuri muta nende ke ba ya kutashi zasu isai and the place will be rowdy please let us cooperate yes before that a video clip will be played for the viewing of those of us who are here and indeed those who are watching us at all other levels. The cliff.
masters and world-renowned scholar on Islam and comparative religion, has long been committed to the noble purpose of spreading the word of Islam. His style of oratory bears an uncanny resemblance to his mentor and person who has influenced him most in making Dawah his passion for life, Sheikh Ahmad Didak. To avoid monotony and add grandeur to the presentations, the color, design, and appearance of more than 12,000 square foot huge open-air stage sets, as well as the indoor stage with state-of-the-art intelligent lighting and props were modified every day. This maintained the liveliness and interest both in the proceedings and amongst the audience. The much-awaited speech by Dr. Zakir Naik on Is the Quran God's Word? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ludovic Bonilla. I am French. My name is Sarah. I graduated in America. Jesus is spiritually the Son of God. Uh, Mr. Naik, uh, this is myself, Dr. Surya Kanpoa from Sengal Hospital. Chastity, I'm an American student studying culture and theology. For the comfort of the audience who attended the morning and afternoon lecture sessions, a special air-conditioned hall was constructed over an acre of land, which had a cooling capacity of over 1,200 tons. 15-year-old Farid Naik, son of Dr. Zakir Naik, was the prodigy, promising and dynamic speaker at the 10-day event, a feast in oratory for the audience, over 35 acres. Audiences attending in hundreds of thousands to witness the 10-day conference and exhibition and professional recording for television of the event from the first to the last day. The best selected English-speaking Islamic scholars and narrators of international stature came together on one platform. The tone of the conference was set with brief inaugural speeches by Abdul Rahim Green, UK, Yasir Fazaga, USA, Salim Al Amri, UAE, Asim Al Hakim, Saudi Arabia, Yusuf Estes, USA, Yasir Qadri, USA, Hussein Yi, Malaysia, Farik Naik, India. Jamal Badavi, Canada, Yahya Ibrahim, Australia, Arib Islam, South Africa, Saeed Rahe, Somalia, Dr. Lawrence Brown, USA, Dr. Jafar Idris, Sudan, Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad, USA, Hatham Al Haddad, UK, Dr. Zaglal Al Najjar, Egypt, and Dr. Zakir Naik, India. Dr. Zakir Naik, the illustrious and world-renowned scholar on Islam and comparative religion has long been committed to the noble purpose of spreading the word of Islam. His style of oratory bears an uncanny resemblance to his mentor and the person who has influenced him most in making Dawa his passion for life, Sheikh Ahmad Didat. To avoid monotony and add grandeur to the presentations, the color, design, and appearance of more than 12,000 square foot huge open-air stage sets, as well as the indoor stage with state-of-the-art intelligent lighting and props were modified every day. This maintained the liveliness and interest both in the proceedings and amongst the audience. The much-awaited speech by Dr. Zakir Naik on Is the Quran God's Word? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ludovic Bonilla. I am French. My name is Sarah. I graduated in America. Jesus is spiritually the Son of God. Uh, Mr. Naik, uh, this is myself, Dr. Surya Khan Poa from Stranger Hospital. Chastity, I'm an American student studying culture and theology. For the comfort of the audience who attended the morning and afternoon lecture sessions, a special air-conditioned hall was constructed over an acre of land, which had a cooling capacity of over 1,200 tons. 15-year-old Farid Naik, son of Dr. Zakir Naik, was the prodigy, promising and dynamic speaker at the 10-day event, a feast in oratory for the audience. Quoting references from the glorious Quran and authentic Hadith and various other scriptures, any human being to point out a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. The needs of children were also taken care of and there was a special place 
Bands arranged for their recreation. British Islamic Nasheed vocalist Abdullah Rohl performed soulful numbers in praise of the tenets of Islam, holding the audience captive to his mellifluous skills. There were no musical instruments used in the Nasheed performances. Hundreds of thousands of people thronged the open air ground for the Jummah Khutbah and Salah led by Sheikh Saud Ashram, eminent Imam of Masjid Al Haram, Makkah Al Mukarramah. of the organizers, I will invite Dr. Zakir Naik to present his lecture title, Quran, the Global Necessity. Faleta Faddal Mashkuran Ma'ajuran, inshallah. Do Allah munaru kumuta nanda annan sujai. Kai, kai malanda au da au da au do Allah ba a gittawa wurin nan kar wanda ya sake gittawa don Allah sannan do Allah a jaye wadanda ke can su gani please for the sake of our seated brothers and sisters we should either sit down or change for this in please Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The Sultan of Sokoto and the religious leader of more than 100 million Muslims of Nigeria, the governors, the respected dignitaries, and my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Before I start my presentation of the day, I would like to speak for a few minutes regarding our dear brothers and sisters in Palestine. Most of us are, most of us are aware of the history of Palestine. 
Hitler incinerated six million Jews. It was a holocaust. Many of these Jews, they took shelter in Palestine. And our Muslim brothers in Palestine, they welcomed them with open hearts. They welcomed their cousins, the Jews, with open hearts. Come and take shelter in our home. They welcomed them. But what happened? Many years later, the same people who were welcomed by the Muslim brothers in Palestine, they take them out of their own home. They occupy their home. And when the Muslim brothers are crying, please give our home back, they are calling them as terrorists. And this is common. You see this happening many places in the world. We know that the Britishers, the French, the Portuguese, they occupied more than two-thirds of the world, especially the Britishers. They occupied many parts of the world. They came to my country, India, and they called Bhagat Singh. When Bhagat Singh tried to take them out of India, they called him as the biggest terrorist at that time. They occupied USA, America, and when George Washington fought again for the freedom of the country, the Britishers called George Washington as terrorist number one. We know the history of South Africa. Nelson Mandela, when he fought for his freedom, he was called as terrorist number one and imprisoned in Robben Island for more than 25 years. But we Indians, we call Bhagat Singh as a freedom fighter, not a terrorist. The Americans, they call George Washington not as a terrorist, but as one of the greatest freedom fighter. The South Africans, they call Nelson Mandela not as a terrorist, but one of the greatest freedom fighter. Same way today, when our Muslim brothers in Palestine, they are doing they are protecting the holiest place of Islam, and fighting for the freedom most of the world. And we know today, in the last one month, they, the Israelis have been doing atrocity for decades. For more than 50 years. In the last one month, they have killed thousands of innocent Palestinians, women, children. We condemn this genocide and we ask the world to tell Israel to stop this genocide. We pray for our Palestinian brothers and sisters that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Jannah to the people who have been martyred. May Allah give them sabr to sustain this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory and raise them in Jannah for those. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's easy for him to solve this problem. What is Allah doing? He's testing us. And I'll cover this in my talk. Allah is testing us. And the Palestinians, Alhamdulillah, most of them will get flying colors. But what about us Muslims? What are we doing? I gave a speech on the 13 action points for the Muslim Ummah as far as Palestine is concerned. I don't intend giving this talk now. Time is short. I have to finish my speech in one hour. That's the time limit led by me, one hour. I started at one o'clock. I have to finish by two o'clock. Allah is testing us. What are we Muslims doing? They will pass with flying colors. They are doing farzi kafaya. What are we Muslims all over the world doing? Are we doing a job? Please do listen to my talk on 13, point act, 13 action points for the Muslim Ummah for Palestine. <clears throat> the Sultan had invited me for this program more than three months back. And after I accepted the invitation to come on 2nd of November, my lawyers told me 
that there is an important case going on in Malaysia. You have to attend on 2nd of November. I said, no. I have given the vote to the Sultan. I cannot cancel my trip. And today morning, few hours back was the hearing, the final and verdict of the case. I had sued, I had filed a demission, I had filed a defamation case against Rama Swami, who is the deputy chief minister of Penang. He was, because he insulted me. Four years ago, in August 2019, I gave a talk in Klantan, a state in Malaysia. And mashallah, there were more than 100,000 people for my talk. It was the largest religious gathering in Malaysia, mashallah. A foreigner coming and giving a talk in Klantan, more than 100,000 people gathered, and the chief minister gave me the award, Dai of the Ummah. The non-Muslim enemies of Islam, they could not digest it. Few days after the talk, they started demanding me. Zakir is the terrorist, Zakir is the hate preacher. So what I did, I picked up the five most important people who maligned me. And most of them, all of them were politicians. One, what I did, I sued them in the court of law. When I sued them, one person was a cabinet minister of human resources. Second person was a deputy chief minister of Penang. One person was member of parliament. Fourth person and the fifth person, they were member of assemblies, all politicians. All of them of Indian origin, maligning me. What I did, I filed the suit against them. They told, who is this foreigner? When we criticize the prime minister, no one does a case against us. Who is this foreigner who is suing us? Allah blessed. Most of them, they did the outside court settlement with me and they apologized to me. I said, no problem. But the biggest enemy of Islam, who I call, I did not forgive him. I said, we let the court case go on. The court case went for two years and today morning was the verdict. Today morning, few hours before the verdict was there and the judge told told Ramasamy, who was at that time the Deputy Chief Minister of Penang, to pay a fine of 1.52 million Malaysian ringgit to Dr. Zakir Naik as compensation. 1.52 Malaysian ringgit is equivalent to 320,000 US dollars. It is equal to 383 million Naira. If one dollar is 1,200 naira, then the judge of high court ordered Ramaswamy to pay Dr. Zakir Naik within 30 days 1.52 million ringgit, which is equal to 320,000 US dollars, which is equal to 383 million naira. And I today, I pledge this amount, this complete amount for the cause of Palestine. I want to donate this full amount. This is the least I can do. This complete amount of 1.52 million ringgit, 320,000 US dollars, 383 million naira, I pledge it as a donation to the Palestinian cause for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verdict just came few hours before, today early morning. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant the martyrs and the firdos. May he give sabr to the brothers and sisters in Palestine. May he give them istiqama. And inshallah, inshallah, victory will be ours. Surely, Allah is testing us. Are we following the Quran or not? Today, the topic of my presentation. First, I'd like to thank the Sultan to invite me as the guest speaker for the closing ceremony of the 10th Sheikh Usman bin Foydu week, 1445 after Hijri, which is 2023 Christian era. I would like to thank him. It's a pleasure and honor for me to come here to the state of Sokoto. It is the second time I'm coming to Nigeria after 10 years, and this is the first time I'm coming to the state of Sokoto. 
And I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed by the state of Sokoto, mashallah. I'm told more than 99% are Muslims. And I'm happy to meet the leader of more than 100 million Muslims in Nigeria, the Sultan of Sokoto. The topic of today's presentation is Al-Quran, the global necessity. Al-Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 38, in every age have we sent a revelation, have we sent a book. By name, four revelations are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. Torah is the wahi which was given to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Zabur is the wahi which was given to David, peace be upon him. Injil was the wahi, the revelation given to Jesus, peace be upon him. Glorious Quran is the last and final revelation given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But there were many other revelations besides this. For example, Suhuf Ibrahim and many others. As the Quran says, in every age have we sent a revelation. But all the revelations that came before the Quran, they were meant only for a particular time period and was meant only for a particular time period. But since the glorious Quran is the last and final revelation. It was not meant only for the Muslims or the Arabs. It was meant for the whole humanity. And it is meant till the last day of judgment. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1, Alif Lam Ra, we have given this book to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide humanity from darkness to light. Not to guide the Muslims or the Arabs, but to guide the whole of humanity from darkness to light. Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52, here is a message for mankind. Let them take warning therefrom. Let them know there is one God. Let the men of understanding take heed. Allah repeats the message in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 185. Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance to humanity. Allah repeats the message in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter 39, verse 41. That this is a message given to thee to instruct humankind. Given to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not to instruct only the Muslims or the Arabs, but to instruct the whole of humanity. This glorious Quran was revealed for the whole of humanity. The glorious Quran, it is the future world constitution. It is the most positive book in the world. It is a proclamation to humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a warning to the heedless. It's a guide to the erring. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering. It's a hope to those in despair. Because the Quran is the future world constitution, it is a global necessity. Because the Quran is the most positive book in the world, the Quran is a global necessity. Because the Quran is the proclamation to humanity, the glorious Quran is a global necessity. Because the Quran is the fountain of mercy and wisdom, Al Quran is a global necessity. Because the Quran is the guidance to humanity, it is a global necessity. Because the Quran is a warning to the heedless, the glorious Quran is a global necessity. Because the Quran is an assurance to those in doubt, Al Quran is the global necessity. Because the Quran is a solace to the suffering, Al Quran is a global necessity. Because the Quran is a hope to those in despair, Al Quran is a global necessity. Whenever you have any equipment, a lot of equipment comes and you. 
the more the more of an instruction manual. So that how to use equipment. If you allow me to call a human being a machine, I would say it is the most complicated machine in the world. It is more complicated than the highest computer in the world. Don't you think we require a instruction manual? The human being with complicated machine, if you allow me to call it a machine, more than the most advanced computer in the world, don't you think it requires an instruction manual? The instruction manual for the human being it is the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran is the last and final instruction manual revealed by the creator of the human being that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the glorious Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. As I told you earlier, that Allah is testing us. For Allah, it's very easy. For Allah to make the Palestinian win over Israel, it's kun for ya kun. Allah is testing us. Are they struggling and striving for the cause of Allah? Allah is testing all the human beings in the world. Are you standing for the truth? So this life, according to the glorious Quran, is a test for the hereafter. If we pass this test, we go to Jannah, paradise. If we fail, we go to hell. We go to Jahannam. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Dhar, chapter 51, verse number 56, that we have created the jinn and the human beings not to me. What is the purpose of our life? Why are we here? Have we ever thought? What are we doing here? Allah gives the answer in Surah Dariya, chapter 15, verse 56. Allah has created and the men not but to worship him. So we are in this world as a test for the hereafter. Our role, our purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've given a talk and you should see this lecture of mine. What is the purpose of creation? When we obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are doing ibadah. We are worshipping him. If we follow the commandments, we are worshipping him. If we stay away from things he has prohibited, we are worshipping him. Ibadah means following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, we have to understand the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll be dealing in detail in my talk on Friday, Halloween, the concept of God's major world religion. But the best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, verse number 1 to 4, where Allah says, Qul hu Allah ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kuffan ahad. There's nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number one and four, verse number one to four. If any person says so and so entity is God, if he fits in this four-line definition of Surah Ikhlas, we Muslims have no objection in accepting that entity as Allah, as God. The first is, Qul huallahu ahad, say he's Allah one and only. Number two, Allah samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yirad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufana. There's nothing like him. This surah class is the touchstone of theology. It is the touchstone of theology. Theo means God. Logic means study. Theology, study of God. And touchstone, you know, when you go to buy and sell gold jewelry, you go to a goldsmith and you want to verify how pure is the gold. So the goldsmith takes the gold and rubs it against the touchstone. And depending upon the color, he tells you whether this gold is 24 karat gold, whether 22 karat gold, whether 18 karat gold, or it may not be gold at all, because all that glitters is not gold. 
to Surya class is the touchstone of theology. The God you are worshipping, you put into the test of Surya class. If the God you are worshipping passes the test of Surya class, he is a true God. If he fails the test, he is a false God. You know, there are some people, some human beings, who say, who claim, Bhagawan Rush needs to be God. Some people, I didn't say Hindus, Hinduism doesn't say that Bhagawan Rajneesh is God, but there are some human beings, many of them, who claim Bhagawan Rajneesh to be God. Let's put this Bhagawan Rajneesh to the test of Surah class. Let us put Bhagwan Rashni to the test of Surah class. Kul Huallahu Ahad. Test number one. Say is Allah one and only. Is Bhagwan Rashni one? There are thousands of men who have claimed to be God, especially the country where I come from, India. There are thousands of men who say they are God. Is he the only one? No. The second test. Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. We know from the biography of Rashni that Bhagwan Rashni. He was suffering from asthma, from diabetes mellitus, from chronic backache. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, from diabetes mellitus, from chronic backache. The third test. Lam yalad walam yulad. He begets not noisy begotten. And we know that Bhagavan Rajnish, he was born and he had a mother and father who later on became his own disciple. He was born in Jabalpur in India. And his parents became his own disciple. In May 1981, Bhagwan Rajnish goes to USA. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his own center called as Rajnish Puram. And thousands of Americans and Europeans gather there. Later on, the American government arrests him and puts him in prison. Bhagwan Rajnish claims that the American government gave me slow poisoning in split. In the prison, the American government gave me slow poisoning. Imagine, Almighty God me slow poisoning. And later on, in 1985, he is kicked out of America and he comes back to India and in the city of Pune, in the state of Maharashtra, where I live, in the city of Pune, he starts the center of Neo Sanyas and later on he calls that Osho Commune. If you go to a center Osho commune, it has thousands of Europeans and Westerners from all over the world. When you go to his Osho commune, in his Samadhi, you know when the Hindus die, they put the ashes and they make a Samadhi. On his Samadhi, is mentioned, Osho Rajnish never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December. 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. Never born, never died. But visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention in his samadhi that he was not given visas to 22 different countries of the world. Almighty God coming to visit the world and he requires visas to go to different countries. And the Archbishop of Greece said, if you don't take out Rajneesh and his followers from this country, we'll burn his house and the house of his disciples. And the last test, the fourth test, is so stringent that no one beside true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can pass. There's nothing like him. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he's not God. We know Rajneesh, like the normal human being, he had two hands, two legs, one nose, two eyes, a long beard. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. Suppose someone says that Bhagwan suppose someone says that God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You heard the name Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person who got the title Mr. Universe, strongest man in the world. 
If someone says Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger, the moment you can compare God to anyone, whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger, whether it be King Kong, whether it be Dara Singh, the moment, whether it's a thousand times or million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. There's nothing like him. This is the four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to find out whether he's true God or not. So I request all the people, check up the God you're worshipping. If it passes the test of Surah Ikhlas, the true God. Otherwise, it's a fake God. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 48, that Allah forgiveth not associating partners with him. Anything else, if he pleases, he may forgive. For anyone who associates partners with Allah, he has created a grave, heinous sin. Allah repeats the message in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 116. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive anyone joining gods with him. Any other sin, if he pleases, he may forgive. For anyone who joins God with Allah, he has strayed away far. So shirk is the biggest sin in Islam. It is the biggest sin. It is the number one major sin. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 73, all those who you call upon besides Allah, if they gather together, listen to this parable, the verse starts, listen to this parable, that all those who you worship besides Allah, if you call them, and if all of them gather together besides Allah, to create a fly, they will not be able to do it. And if the fly snatches away something, they will not be able to get it back. Feeble are those who petition, and feeble are those to whom they petition. Allah is telling in the Quran that all the false god that you worship. You know, according to Hindu scriptures in Hinduism alone, there are, 300, there are 33 crow gods. That means 330 million gods. If all the religions put together, there are hundreds of millions of God. Allah is telling here in this verse of the Quran, if all these people who you worship besides Allah, these hundreds of millions of gods, false gods, that you worship besides Allah, if they gather together to create a fly, they will not be able to do it. And the verse continues. If the fly snatches something away, they won't even be able to get it back. They decide to create a fly, they cannot even get back if the fly snatches something from them. Feeble, weak are those people who pray to them and weak are those people to whom they pray. Because the glorious Quran explains to us the concept of true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quran is a global necessity. The Quran talks about Salah. In English, people normally translate Salah as prayer. Prayer, if you open the dictionary, means to beseech, to ask for help. According to me, prayer is not the appropriate translation of the Arabic word Salah. What we do dua after the Salah, that is prayer. The Salah is far superior to praying. In the Salah, besides asking for help, we are getting guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Arabic word Salah comes from the root word Salah, means connection. The servant connects with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Salah means connecting to God. I call it the programming towards righteousness. When we pray, we read Surah Fatiha. After that, Imam is telling us. He's giving us guidance. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Five times a day, we are being programmed towards righteousness. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah an Kabut, chapter 29, verse 45. Utlu, am, utlu ma uhiya ilayka kitab. Waqimu salat. Inna salata tanha anil fashaya wal munkar. Recite of what we have revealed to thee 
of the Quran and establish Salah. For Salah restrains you from shameful and unjust deed. That means Salah keeps you on the straight path. It prevents you from shameful and unjust deed. It prevents you from sin. So if you offer Salah correctly, you will be on the straight path. Because Salah, because the Quran teaches us about Salah, the Quran is a global necessity. The Quran speaks about Zakat. It is the third pillar of Islam that every rich human being, every rich Muslim who has the saving of more than the Nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth every lunar year in charity. If every rich human being in the world gives zakat, gives this 2.5% charity, poverty will be eradicated from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. And there are several surahs of the Quran, multiple times. Aqimu salah, wa'atu zakah. Establish salah and give your zakah. Multiple times in the Quran. Surah Baqra, Surah Imran, Surah Nisa. The Quran talks about the fourth pillar of Islam, Psalm. That every elder Muslim who has the health and is not traveling, it's compulsory that he fasts in the month of Ramadan. He abstains from drinking or eating food and sex from dawn to sunset in the complete month of Ramadan. I call Ramadan as the overhauling of the human body. Like when you have a car or a motorcycle, you're required to service it. Maybe every six months, every year, Similarly, if you call this human being a machine, it requires servicing at least once a year for one month. If you can abstain from smoking from dawn to sunset, you can very well abstain from smoking from the kettle to the grave. If you can abstain from drinking alcohol from dawn to sunset, very well you can abstain from having alcohol from the kill to the grave. Ramzan is a month which encourages you to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It encourages you to do good deeds and it encourages you to stop the evil deed. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 183, Ramzan, Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 183, that fasting was prescribed to you as it was prescribed to people before you, so that you may learn self-restraint, so that you may learn taqwa, so that you may learn God consciousness, so that you may learn piety. So the main reason our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed us to fast for one month in the month of Ramadan is so that we attain taqwa, righteousness, God consciousness, piety. The glorious Quran speaks about the fifth pillar, that is Hajj. It is compulsory for every adult Muslim who has health and has the economic means that at least once in his lifetime, he should perform Hajj, the pilgrimage, in the month of Hajj, from 8th to the 13th of Zilijah, and travel to the city of Makkah, the state of Makkah, Mina, Arafah, Muzdalifa, back to Mina, and Makkah in the six days from 8th to the 13th of the Hajj. And there's a full surah by the name Surah Hajj, chapter 22 in the Quran. And this Hajj is the biggest annual gathering in the world where more than 4 million people gather from different parts of the world. From USA, from Canada, from UK, from Pakistan, from India, from Saudi Arabia, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from different parts of the world. And the men, they are dressed in two pieces of unsewn cloth. You cannot identify the person next to you whether he's a king or a pauper. All equal in the sight of Allah. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Here I am, O oh my Lord, at your service. It is the best example of universal brotherhood in the world. Whether black or white, yellow or brown. Two pieces of unsewn cloth, all equal in the sight of Allah. 
because the glorious Quran teaches us about Salah, about Psalm, about Zakat, about Hajj, I say Al-Quran is a global necessity. The Quran gives us the criteria for a person to go to Jannah, to attain salvation. <clears throat> Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Wal Asr, Inna al-insana la fi khusr, illa ladhina amanu, wa aminu salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqq, wa tawasaw bil sabr. That by the token of time, man is verily in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who do righteous deed, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. Those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. These minimum four criteria are required for any human being to go to, go to Jannah. Number one is Iman, having faith. Number two, Amal Salihat, righteous deed. Number three, Watawa Sobil Haq, inviting people to truth, doing dawa and islah. And number four, Watawa Sobil Sabr, inviting people to patience and perseverance. If any one of these criteria is missing, under normal circumstances, you shall not go to Jannah. All four criteria are equally important. Iman, righteous deed, dawa, and inviting people to patience and perseverance. So Quran gives you the formula to attain Jannah, to go to paradise. Because Quran gives you the formula to go to Jannah, to attain paradise, I said Al-Quran is a global necessity. A beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number seven, hadith number 7417, the Prophet said, this world is a prison for the believers and it is paradise for the unbelievers. There's incidents that once Hafiz Ibn Hajar Asqalani, may Allah have mercy on him, he was a great scholar, he wrote the Sharah of Bukhari, the second most important book after the Quran. When he was going in the marketplace with his entourage, he was the chief Qazi, and people, a poor Jew, he comes and he catches the mule of Hafiz ibn Hajar Asqalani, Rahimullah. And he tells him, I heard that your prophet said, this world is a prison for the believers and it is paradise for the unbelievers. You, you are so rich, you are leading a luxurious life. I am a poor man. He was wearing torn clothes. How can you explain the hadith of your prophet that this world is a prison for a believer like you who are so rich and living comfortably and it's a paradise for a poor person, unbeliever like me, who's poor with torn clothes? The Hafiz Ibn Hajar Asqalani says that I know what's going to happen in the future and I know that in Akhira, in the next life, for the believers, we will get paradise. And if you compare the Jannah to this world, what I'm living, compared to the Jannah, it is billion times better. This world with all the wealth is a prison. And I know the unbelievers like you who do not believe in Allah, in the next life they will go to Jahannam. And the Jahannam will be so bad that even if you are the poorest man in the world, if you compare to Jahannam, your this life will be like paradise compared to Jannam. So this is the explanation of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of Sahib Muslim, volume 7, hadith number 7417, that you may be the richest man in the world, you may have the maximum luxury, but compared to the luxury of Akhirah in Jannah, it will be a billion times better. <clears throat> so if you compare the difference between the poorest man who goes to Jannah and the richest man in the world going to Jannah, the difference is very less. So this world, you should not be bothered whether you're poor or rich, whether you're a king or a pauper. You should be bothered that you pass the test. Because the Jannah, 
and the prophet said it is more easier for the poor man to go to jannah than a rich man because the rich man has to give hisab kitab he has to give accountability of everything more difficult <clears throat> so comparatively it is billion times better than the richest man in the world and compared to the poor man also it is a billion times hardly any difference and the jannah is so worse the description given in the quran and the hadith even if you are the poorest man in this world it will be like paradise the fire when it comes on your feet your brain will boil can you believe so this is the explanation and this quran it prevents you to go from jahannam going to jahannam and encourages you to go to jannah that is the reason i call the glorious quran a global necessity I'm sorry I'm straining my voice because <clears throat> the public address system is not up to the standard <clears throat> and I'm speaking to the commission of religious affairs they faced today that when a mujahid goes to the battlefield his weapon is required for a dai when he's giving a lecture my weapon is the microphone system you may find my voice to be good you know, as the professional I'm, if I modulate better, the impact of my lecture becomes ten times more, fifty times more. But Alhamdulillah, this microphone is better than yesterday's. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> And believe me, hiring a good microphone system is not expensive. But unfortunately, we Muslims are not well versed with what's required. Inshallah, we will educate ourselves. and i gave a talk to the dais of sokoto more than 100 were there mashallah it was wonderful meeting them mashallah now continuing with the talk the glorious quran has the solutions to the problems of human kind because the glorious quran has the solution to all the problems of human kind i say al quran is a global necessity al quran is the furqan allah refers to the quran as furqan the criteria to judge right from wrong al quran has the solution to the problem of racism one of the biggest problem in the world today is racism allah gives the solution in surah hujurat chapter number 49 verse number 13 allah says ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa jalnakum shauba wa qaba'ila litarafu inna karmakum min dhalayatkum inna la alimul khabir oh human kind we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other not that you shall despise each other and the most honored in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa who has god consciousness who has piety who has righteousness the criteria for judgment in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious quran it's not wealth it's not age it's not sex it's not color it is taqwa it is righteousness it is piety it's god consciousness according to the quran no black man is superior to a white man or a white man is superior to a black man no rich man is superior to a poor man or a poor man for rich man no male is superior to a female or a female to a male unless with one criteria taqwa righteousness god consciousness tawhid this one verse of the quran will solve all the problem of racism in the world if the humanity follows this our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the last time farewell pilgrimage in the hajjatul wida he said that no arab is superior to a non arab no black or no non arab is superior to an arab a black man is a white man is not superior to a black man neither a black man is superior to a white man except by taqwa and we demonstrate this every 
day, five times of our life, every day in Salah. When we stand for Salah, we stand shoulder to shoulder, feet to feet, whether king or papa, black or white, yellow or brown, rich or poor. When we stand for Salah in front of Allah, we stand together. It will abolish all kinds of racism in the world. Quran, because it has the solution for racism, I say Al-Quran is a global necessity. Everyone in the world should know about the Quran and follow it. Then only will there be peace. Al-Quran has the solution to terrorism. One verse of the Quran is sufficient for the major solution of terrorism. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Allah says in the Quran, if anyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, kills any other innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And the verse does not stop, the verse continues. And if anyone saves any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, if you save any innocent human being, it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity. This one verse of the Quran is the major solution for terrorism. The Israelis, they are killing thousands of innocent human beings. If they follow the Quran, in Islam, in Islam, even when we go for war, our beloved Prophet said, do not harm the women, do not harm the children, do not harm the elderly people who do not come to war, do not cut down trees. And whatever wrong information today, the Israelis are giving wrong information. What they are saying, that Hamas, you know, the Palestinians are fighting for the freedom. They killed 40 babies and they're showing video of it. All fabrication. Biden is saying, I saw with my own eyes that Hamas killed 40 babies. Fabrication. Afterwards, when you are exposed, some other American says, oh, it was a mistake. They are laying allegation that the Palestinians are killing innocent civilians. What information we have from the social media, authentic information, mashallah, even when the Palestinians are retaliating, they are not attacking purposely any innocent human being. They aren't attacking the women, aren't attacking the children. And we know of various incidents that when they go to the houses, they tell the women, we are Muslims, you are safe from us. And when they're hungry, when they attack the house, they keep the woman safe, they even take permission. Can we please take a banana from your fridge? Can you believe? Someone is coming in your house to take back his house with arms and they're taking permission to have one banana. And when they go, when they retaliate the military, of Israel and when they leave their homes they leave the homes and when they come and when they take food from their fridge they leave a note we are sorry we ate food from your fridge and then they go back this is Islam and now they are blaming them that they are terrorists today is the world is a global village by social media they are being exposed they could fabricate about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq they spent $573 million to fabricate videos to show that Israel has weapons of mass destruction. And after many years, they say, sorry, finish. They kill millions of Muslims in Iraq, and now they say, sorry, matter is over. Today, mashallah, it's a blessing that not only Muslims, the non-Muslims, because of the social media, the majority are supporting the Palestinian cause. 
though the major satellite channels, CNN, BBC, they are telling that the Palestinians are terrorists, but the social media is flooded with evidence. What they're doing is wrong. You see rallies all over the world. All over the world. In America, in Western countries, in European countries, in India, in Muslim countries, even in Nigeria, hundreds of thousands of people are protesting against the injustice. This is the power of social media. Islam has the solution for terrorism. Islam has the solution for injustice. Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 135, that, Ya Amanu, O oh, you believe, stand not for justice as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself, against your parents, against your relatives, with the rich or poor. When you're doing justice, don't look at him whether he's your friend, he's your mother or a father, or a relative, or rich or poor. As the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, by Allah, if my daughter Fatima robs, I will chop off her hand. This is justice. Justice. Islam has the solution for alcoholism and drug addiction. Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, Ya ayyuhalladhin amanu, innam al khamru al maysuru. Oh, you believe, most certainly in toxic gifts and gambling. Wal ansabu wal aslamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich to minimally shaitan. These are said in the handiwork. Fashtani mulalluk of tuflihun. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. In Islam, alcoholism drug addiction. It is prohibited. You know, every day, every year, according to who, more than 4 million people die only because of alcoholism. You know, America, a few decades earlier, they tried to ban alcohol, knowing it's very bad for health. When they tried, the government collapsed. There was bootlegging, there was illegal alcohol, and the government collapsed. They again got back alcohol. 1400 years ago, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he recited the verse of this Quran, Ya Yuladina Amanu, Innam al Khamru al Maisuru, most certainly intoxicated and gambling. Ya Yuladina Amanu, Innam al Khamru al Maisuru, oh you believe, most certainly intoxicated and gambling. Wal Anzabu al Aslamu, dedication of stone, divination of arrows, rich to manamini shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. Just because the Prophet recited the verse of the Quran, barrels of alcohol were emptied in Medina, never to be filled again. What America, with all its power, could not do for many years, a Prophet did with just one verse. One verse of the Quran he, re he recited, and the barrels of alcohol were emptied in Medina, never to be filled again. If Quran has the solution to the problem of of fornication, of adultery, of prostitution. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 32, come not close to adultery, for it's an evil opening other roads to evil. Come not close to adultery. Don't do adultery. Come not close to adultery, because it's an evil opening other roads to evil. Quran has the solution to the problem of pornography, of immodesty, of obscenity. Islam and Quran and Hadith, they prescribe hijab. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 30, it first speaks about hijab for the man. Ya Lidin Amun, oh you believe, lower your gaze and protect your modesty. Whenever a man looks at a woman and any brazen thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. That is the hijab for the man. And for the woman, the next verse, Surah Nisa, chapter 24, verse 31, say to the bleeding woman, she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty except what appears ordinary of. There are basically six criteria for hijab given in the Quran and the Hadith. Number one is the extent. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and hands up to the wrist. Some say that even the face should be covered. The remaining five criteria are the same for the man and the woman. The clothes they wear should not be tight-fitting so that it reveals the figure. Number three, it should not be translucent or transparent so that you can see through the clothes. 
Number four, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Number five, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And number six, it should not resemble that of the unbelievers. These are the six criteria for hijab. And people ask me that why hijab should be done. I tell them that if there are two twin sisters who are very beautiful, equally beautiful, if they are walking down the streets of Sokoto, and if one sister, one lady, she is wearing a, a complete hijab, Islamic hijab, complete body covered, only part seen is face and hand to the wrist. And the second twin sister, she's a westerner, wearing mini skirts or shorts with a low neck. And as they're walking down the streets of New York or Sokoto, and around the corner there is a hooligan who's waiting for a catch who to tease a girl. Which girl will it tease? Will it tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab or will it tease the girl wearing the western clothes, mini skirts and shorts? Which girl will it tease? Which girl? <laughs> mini skirts, correct. Simple question, simple answer. Quran says in Surah Zumur chapter 39, Allah says in Surah Azab, chapter, chapter 33, verse 59, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women, when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak so that they shall be recognized. So hijab has been prescribed to prevent the women from being molested, to protect them. So Quran has the solution for obscenity, for ease teasing, for pornography. Quran has the solution for the bribery and corruption. Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 188, eat up not wealth amongst yourself or use it as a bait for judges in order that willfully, wrongfully you will eat other people's wealth. So giving money as bribe is prohibited in the Quran. Quran has the solution for economy. Allah says in no less than eight places, riba has been prohibited. And Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse number 278 and 279 about riba, about interest, that those who give up not the demands of riba, demands of interest and usury, take notice of a war from Allah and his Rasul. That means Allah and his Rasul will wage a war against you if you deal in riba. It is the 12th major sin in Islam according to Imam Adabi in his book The Kabair, the major sin. Quran has the solution for all the problems. Whether it be an individual problem, whether it be a family problem, whether it be a society problem, whether it be a national problem, whether it be a global problem. Quran has the solution for all the problems. Therefore, I say, Quran is a global necessity. Quran has a solution, solution to the problem, whether it be social problem, whether it be psychological problem, whether it be economical problem, whether it be political problem. Because Quran has the solution to all the problems, Quran is a global necessity. I would like to end my speech by giving one more message of the Quran, which I mentioned earlier, that one of the criteria to go to Jannah is Dawah. And I'll, give, I'll be giving a talk in Abuja on the 5th of November on Sunday, Dawah or destruction. Muslim choice, Dawah or destruction. You do Dawah, otherwise you'll be destroyed. I'll just quote one verse of the Quran of Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 110, where Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin nas. Oi, Muslims, you are the best of people, the all for mankind. Allah is giving us an honor and calling us the best of people. There is no honor without responsibility. Don't you think we have a responsibility? Allah continues to say, Because we enjoy what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. If we do not enjoy what is good, and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we are unfit to be called as khaira ummah, we are unfit to be called as Muslims. Doing da'wah is part of every Muslim. Otherwise, you should not go to, go to Jannah. Only praying, fasting, hajj is not sufficient. According to Surah Al-Asr, if you don't do da'wah, you shall not enter Jannah. I would like to end my speech with the verse of the Quran, which is repeated three times. It's mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 33. And Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 28. And Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9. Huwa alladhi arsala rasulu bilhuda wa dinul haqq 
Leo Zira Valadine Kulle. Allah sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions, all the other isms, whether it be communism, atheism, Christianism, Hinduism, Judaism. Islam is destined to supersede all. Kulle, overcome them all. And Allah says in two places, However much the mushrik don't like it. And one place Allah says, that And enough is Allah is a witness. Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah does not require you and me to solve the problem of Palestine. He can do within seconds, kun fayakun. Allah is giving us an opportunity to earn Jannah. Allah is seeing what you're going to do for the cause of a Palestinian brothers and sisters. Allah has given us this, all the luxury the clothes, the food we eat. What are we doing for our brothers in Palestine, for our sisters in Palestine? I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant them Jannah and give them sabr and give them victory over the Zalimun. Wa akhir dawan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar. That was a one hour lecture titled Quran, the Global Necessity, delivered by Dr. Zakir Naik. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma farratna fil kitab min shay. Jazakumullah khair. Your Excellencies, without Taking much time, we'll invite His Eminence the Sultan for his address. Allahu Akbar. Your Excellency is the governors of the Sokoto Kebi Zamfara, especially the governor of Kebi personally here, deputy governor of Zamfara, representing the governor and our own SSG representing the governor of Sokoto. Our most distinguished chairman of this program, the Emir of Zazao. Our most distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Zakir Naik. Our most distinguished recipients of the award today our most prominent and most distinguished audience, the ladies and gentlemen in the house, and those listening across the world, because this program is streamed live across the world, I greet you in the best form of greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, as the main person of the day, so this program is the closing ceremony of Sheikh Uthman bin Fodio week, happened to, by the grace of Almighty Allah, be the Khalifa, and also being the one that invited our brother, Dr. Zakir, for this program, and our most distinguished brothers too here. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to personally crave your indulgence and understanding because of the crowded nature of this hall, because you have crammed into this hall 
in a number that's much more than the capacity of the hall, because everybody wanted to see, not to hear, to see Dr. Zakir Naik, because if he was to hear, you would have said at home, as you have handsets. So you are crowded here, it's a bit inconveniencing, but alhamdulillah for this day, we are all, you all trooped out here to be part of this very special program. So I'd like to thank you for your patience and holding on as I will rush to finish this program in the next 40 minutes, inshallah. According to the program, the organizers led by Sadok Sakoto gave me 20 minutes to speak. So I'm going to take my 20 minutes. I won't go more than 20 minutes because there are so many things I have to say and they are very important. But I'd like to thank Almighty Allah for this day and for bringing us to Sokoto. So many of you came from far distance places to honor this day, especially Dr. Zakir Naik. I know what it took him to be in Sokoto and the chairman of the occasion, the Emir of Zazo and our recipients who came from Abuja and Bidda and other places. We'd like to thank you most sincerely for accepting to be with us. And we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your lives because you have been doing a lot. All what's been said by the previous speakers, especially Sadaf Sakoto, who told us why we're here, what we're here for, which is the culmination of the week-long program. I won't even say week-long, I can say two-week-long program because for the past two weeks, we've been having so many programs and we are all educated. And education is the best weapon you can give any believer. So alhamdulillah for this program. And I'd like to thank all those who had a hand one way or the other in educating our people for this past one week or so. And I would like to thank Dr. Zakir Naik also again uh, for coming to this 10th Osman Lamfordio week, also the third year that we've had a hand fully by being here pre uh, uh, personally and created awards to bring together the Muslim Ummah. Why do we invite renowned preachers from outside Nigeria to come to Sokoto for this program? The answer is simple. Islam is one everywhere across the world. And as Muslims, we have the right to invite fellow Muslims to come and interact with us, to educate us more, to know more about us as they go back to be our ambassadors and speakers in the other parts of the world where they live. I remember last year we brought, we brought Abdul Hakim Quick from Canada. And when he went back to Canada, he delivered a very powerful khutbah at the Jumu'at prayers. Very, very instructive. And he sent us copies and we passed around. If he had not come, he wouldn't have seen what Sokoto is. He wouldn't have had that knowledge to talk about Sokoto Caliphate and Uthman Amfodio. Today, Alhamdulillah, we have a world-renowned Dr. Zakir Naik, whom I have known for the past 11 years. We first met in Mecca during Umrah, and we got talking, and he came to see me, and we discussed. That was 11 years ago. He came to Nigeria 10 years ago, but today he's our guest in Sokoto. So Sokoto is happy to receive you, Dr. And hope you come back again and again whenever we invite you. The issue is simple. We are Muslims, and alhamdulillah, we are very proud to be Muslims. And we thank Almighty Allah SWT for making us Muslim, creating us Muslims, and bringing us into this part of the world. And nothing else could change our views about Islam and about what we should do. We are working for Islam and nothing else. We are not working for anybody. And that's why whenever we meet as Muslim leaders, we must tell ourselves the home truth. We are Muslims by Allah's divine will, 
and nobody could change it. And we are very happy and proud. Some people don't want us to speak, but we will speak. Maybe I would have used my military voice in those days. When I was a soldier commanding parade on parade ground. But now it's a different game. I have to use microphone. And Dr. Zaki Naik said, this microphone is better than yesterday's. So that is technology. So alhamdulillah for being Muslims and we thank Almighty Allah and we continue to praise him and worship him, him and only him alone. We have had an instructive, very beautiful lecture by Dr. Zakir Naik and I'm sure a lot of people across the world must have heard the same thing. What he said is the plain truth according to Islamic principles and tenets and according to his own knowledge as somebody who is into dawah activities and nothing more about that. So those who are thinking that he's going to say something different should have a rethink. What he said is educating Muslims and non-Muslims alike what Islam is and what Islam is not. So Alhamdulillah for this day, and I want to thank all of you for coming, and I won't go too much into uh, other discussions of this nature, it's already after two o'clock, and I have said, have them been given 10 minutes, I will use my 10 minutes. But the point is that we have no apology to anybody that we invited one of our own as a Muslim, as a Muslim preacher to come and talk to us about Islam and the Quran, and we'll do it again and again. Because we believe in what we tell one another. We have to tell ourselves the home truth. The doctor just said we have to tell the truth if it's against you or your parents or your friends. So, we want to thank you most sincerely. Some of the good behaviors of any Muslim, I believe, are honesty, integrity, and fear of Almighty Allah. For a Muslim to be a good Muslim, there are so many, but these three, I believe, they hold, they are at the front. And that's why September last year, 20, about 27th September, one Nigerian, one Muslim brother had a lot of money left in his Kekena Pep in Kano. As a good Muslim, what did he do? He went to radio station. He said, somebody was in my, was in my Kekena Pep and he left this money. He returned the money. I wonder what we had, even that night, they had to take Gary to sleep, but he didn't take that money. The conscience of Islam pricked him and said, look, let me return this money. And for that reason, we believe we must bring him out to you here to see him and for us to thank him. For us to thank him and tell him, yes, we are proud of you as our son, as a fellow Muslim who did that. And we will not tell anybody what we are going to give you. But you being here, being brought to the public here, we also have a little paper that you will keep laminate and say, this is from Sultan that I signed it, thanking you, thanking Allah for your life, and calling on other Muslims also to follow the same, so, the same road you, you took. So why is, uh, why is the young man? Why is he? I want to bring, uh, I think, Salisuko. I want Salisu. Come to the front here. 
fica todo mundo. Today we brought him from Cairo for you to see him, for us to thank him for being a good Muslim, Muslim and a Muslim with integrity, and we want to wish you all the best, and we continue to work with you. We will call you privately, not publicly, to see what we can do for you. We don't want to tell everybody, we don't want the bandits to go after you. But we'll give you a paper for you to go and show everybody that yes, you are here, you shook the hands of Sultan, you took a picture with him, he gave you a piece of paper, you took the hands of Emir Abzazo, the governor of Kebi, governor of Sokoto, governor of Zamfara, and of course, Esunipe, and then our main guest, Sheikh Dr. Zakir Naik. So, I'm going to talk to you about the word of Allah, I'm going to talk to you about the word of Allah, I'm going to talk to you about During the last Hajj, one Hajjah, they call her Enna Huche, picked about $8,000 cash, $8,000 cash in Saudi Arabia. And she took the money back to the Hajj Commission of Zamfara. The money was traced to somebody and was returned to that person. That Hajjah, it also here, we brought her for you to see her, and we thank her for, you to, for her to know what she did is exemplary, and she's our daughter. In other cases, so then, to gahaja ena huche, eka ena huche che, tega pudi dela hadibu tekuas, nela no kena. Saya kembali nak nak kena, kau ini kecil jom kudi, cemai dah, amak mesti nak nak wujud. Tu makanya kan bujau wujud dua nanti ganca, muka ada gold dia macam, muka ada rafa macam gua, dia wan tekal dia, dia kuma abon dia mau baca, bawa muka di, kumpa bawa bawa dia koyak sih, amat, dia mesti nak dahalin nak wujud kita seorang kau yang kandang fara, amat mana kau ada gold dia macam aja, Allah yang ada sahabat kita, ya biar bukan tu nak alheri. Another We must always to be, I mean, try to be good. The last point I'm going to speak, I always speak. The last point I'm going to speak about, the award. I instituted the award three years ago. We call the awards with Man and Fodio Award for leadership. And the first winners were Professor Sheo Galadenchi at this very hall, last year's winner, Sheikh Abakar Mahmoud Gumi, posthumously. And this year, we are giving it to no other person than Sheikh Isia Kurabiu, posthumously, because of our relationship with him for the work he, had been, he did for Islam and his family members are still doing for Islam. So he is the year's, this year's winner of this award. The second is the Sheikh Abdullah Efodio Award for scholarship. Our own Sheikh Isa Tlatan Mafara is known very well across the world. He had been reading and writing and teaching Uthman and Fodio books and other Islamic subjects. This year, he is the winner of Sheikh Ablai Fodio Prize for scholarship. It was won first by Sheikh Ahmad Lemu, posthumously, Sheikh Sharif Saleh last year, and this year, 
Sheikh Muhammad Isa Tlatem Mafara. The third prize is Sultan Muhammad Biello Prize for governance, for good governance. Governance in the sense that we as Muslims, we consider governance as a very, very important thing. A leader must hold on to certain ideals of good governance. When we instituted it, the first winner was the Sheikh of Borno, and the second winner was late Emir of Kano, Alaja Ado Bayero. And this year's winner is no other than my own friend, my own colleague in the army, in the armored corps, a general like me, the Ed Unupe, and the chairman of Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers. And the fourth award is Nana Asma'o's award, which was won first by Professor Sadia, and then Hajia Latifa Okunu of Lagos last year, former deputy governor. And this year, it goes to Professor Khadija Nuhu from Kano. Then the fifth award is my own personal award because we named it Sultan Saad Abakar Award for Peace. Last year's award, or the first, award, the first winner was Abdul Latif Adebite of Blessed Memory. And the last year's winner was Fuad Ademi, whom you all know very well. And this year's award is no other person than Professor Ishaq Oloyede, the famous registrar of JAMB, who returned billions and billions of naira, who caught, who caught a snake that swallowed 36 million naira. Today he is the winner because of his role as president of Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, very, very close to me. I personally picked all these awards, all those who are going to be awarded today. And the last one, the public's one and only, I think the one and only public who was head of service of the Federation, who was secretary of the government of the Federation, who was minister of defense of the Federation. Three appointments, no, no, no other person ever held these three appointments. So the, the winner this year is no other than Mahmoud Yali Ahmed, Aji and Katago. So these are the winners, and I've been close to all of them, and I could vouch for their integrity, and yes, they deserve to be given these awards. These awards come with little token. To most of them, the little token I'm giving is from my heart, it's personal, but I know so many of them have trillions of that. But I know they will take it home. I'm tired of buying Allah when the Basuda, so that's the award and the prizes. I would like to call on the governors of Sokoto Kebi Zamfara and the chairman to join me here so that we give these awards to these six distinguished Muslim leaders in this country. Sheikh Osman Danfordio Award for Leadership. It goes to Sheikh. Is here to bribe you posthumously. Sheikh Abdullah Fodio.
Sheikh Isa Talata, Talata Mafara, I will request the governor of uh, KB State to award this. No, I will, I will hold on. I will give a... Uh, okay, it's a live audio. It's a live audio, yes. So the governor of KB will do the justice to that because he is the KB state man. Why is Uh, the next one is uh, Bagadoji. It's a nupe, Malam Dendo. He has the prize of good governance. You need to go to Bida Emre to see what he's doing, how he has, he has moved the whole populace in terms of security and otherwise. We are, we are witnesses to that. And good enough, we are in the, we are in the same Amorko. And uh, we are now in the same boat. Uh, the governor of uh, Zamfara State will give the award. That was the general salute for a general. For you civilians who don't know what it is, that's general salute. It's only done to generals, not to civilians. The next award is for Professor Khadija Nuhu, the Nana Asmao Award. Well, she represented by her own colleagues and will be given by the Emir of Zazao. Thank you very much. So, the last one, no, the second to the last, the Sultan Saad Prize for Leadership, Professor Ishaq Oloede. Ingbati, Ingbati. Welcome to Sokoto. To be given by the, I don't want, give, I don't want the governor of Sokoto to give, I have my reason. To be given again by the governor of uh, KB, or let me just give it to him for for reasons best known to me. The last one, and a very prominent one, the public servant of public officers, Aji Ankatabu, Alaji Ali Ahmed, to be given by the governor of Sokoto State. If you, what you don't know, Yali Ahmed is the father of governor of Sokoto State. And that's why I said I will leave that one for the governor to give. If we were to be here, he would have been jumping with joy that he's given his father this award. So 
We will request the governor of Sokoto to give the award. I would like to thank all of you for honoring us. Please take your seats so that we just round up. After this, we'll have a group photograph with the winners of the award at the end of this. So I'd like to thank you for your patience. And I would like to thank you for your patience for being part of history and we pray for a successful journey back to various destinations. We will have two goodwill messages from the governor of Zamfara and the governor of Kebi before the final message from the governor of Sokoto State. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. At Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, we congratulate the recipient and we thanks His Eminence for this gesture. Jazakumullah khair. Please, those who are standing within the vicinity of the hall should please vacate. Don Allah do what and that's a key word in Nansupita. Don Allah, I pita the guess a key who healing. Your Excellencies, Your Highness, I would like to invite the Governor of KB Street, His Excellency. Before the goodwill messages, one of the recipients and indeed former secretary to the federal government of the federation would forward an appreciation of, on behalf of other recipients. Alaji Ali Ahmad. Audhu billahi sabiul alimina shaitan al-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Your Excellencies the governors of Sokoto, Kebbi, and Zampara states, your eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, your royal highnesses, our distinguished guest speaker, Sheikh Zakir Abdul Karim Naik, the founder and the president of Islamic research and the peace television, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it would appear that as the youngest recipient, I am tasked with expressing our profound appreciation to His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, for this wonderful and exalted honor done to all of us. In particular, I am grateful to Esunipe 
who directed me to come on his behalf and on behalf of the other four speakers to talk and thank the caliphate and its leader. Certainly, we Muslims must always be proud of our religion. And despite whatever Allah will give us on this earth, if we are shy of identifying ourselves as true Muslims, we are doing great disservice to this nation. Therefore, we have no apology of being Muslims. And we have no apology of enhancing the qualities of Islam anywhere. And we are equal to the task in this nation and other nations that so long as we survive, we will identify unapologetically with the tenets of Islam. We will never compromise the teachings of Islam. We are very grateful that we have a leader in this country who is up and doing, always traveling far and wide the horizons of this beautiful country to exercise his mandate and authority of being the commander of the faithful. Your Eminence, the Muslim community of this country are solidly behind you. We like to extend our total loyalty to the service of Islam under your very ever leadership. This honor done to us is not done to us individually, but selected to permeate the whole fabric of being good leaders and good Muslims without apology. Sir, we will eternally be grateful, and through you, please extend our appreciation to the governors of Sokoto, Kepi, and Zampara states, because here is the nucleus of the caliphate. Finally, even though he has been thanked wonderfully, I would like to express our appreciation our guest lecturer. Our guest lecturer, Dr. Nak, he is undoubtedly at this point in time of Islamic development a special gift to Islam from Allah the Almighty. May Allah continue to give you the courage to say the wonderful words of Allah without fear or fear. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with the representatives and our deeds and honorees will ever eternally be grateful to the Sultan. I thank you all on our behalf. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the former uh, Secretary to the Federal Government of Nigeria. And with that, I would like to invite for goodwill message, the governor of Zampara State, heavily represented by his deputy, His Excellency Mani Malam Mama, uh, Malam Mumuni Masamar Mudi, Matawal Lembukuyu. You are invited, sir. Auzu billahi mani shaitani rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim Jamaa aslamu alaikum Niza yida hausa dan dukkan jamaa mu da na gida na kakara Suji abinda munka zo yina Me alparma sarkin musulmi Babana Alayya Saad Abbaqar Maya maya sarakuna da ke wanda nguri Gwamna njaha sabkoto Awakilin Gwamna njaha Awakilin Gwamna njaha sabkoto Gwamna njaha kebi Maigidamu 
sauran mayan malumai musamman wanda aka wanda ya bada lecture Sheikh Zakir Naik Allah ya saka mashi da alheri a ba abun da zan fada amma da zan fara ko gwamnatin zan fara shine mai gidana Dr Daula Alawal ya umurce ni da sassafe in baro in zo nan domin in samu kaina nan amma da jihar zan fara don mu gwadi yaddan mu da ba da goyon bayan mu da sanin muhimmancin wannan aikin da aka yi yau na musulunci Allah ya saka mu suka shirya shi da alheri mai alfarma sarkin musulmi mu zan farawa 100% muke tare da wannan gida muke tare da ku kuma mun san aikin da kuka yi bayan wannan kasa musamman ni ma ni malamin mun wanda ya to da wani gari wadda ake matsa hawa yanzu masa ma mudi Allah kara ba da sala Allah ya saka muku da alheri shugaban suka shirye wannan wuri ko suka shirye wannan aiki ba karamai aiki suka yi ba dukkan abin da sun kai don ci na sanin wannan wuri su ma Allah ya saka musu da alheri amma da jihar sauka yanzu gwamnatin jihar Zamfara da al'umma jihar Zamfara muna bayan muna bada goyon ba 100% kuma mun yarda da aikin da an kai na alheri kuma Allah ya sa ya ya da jikoki na ba wannan bawon Allah shakshu na foto su ci gaba da ai wata aikin alheri kamar wanda yayi mun gode kware Allah saka da alheri masha Allah muna godiya mai girma mataimakin gwamna and with that i would like to invite the next person to deliver his goodwill message the governor of Zamfara state uh the governor of Kebi state his excellency nasir idris uh kauran gwandu comrade sir أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا اكسلنسيز دي غوفرنور اوف سوكوتو اند زامبارا ستيتس دي سيمينيس دي سلطان اوف سوكوتو دي اميرز اوف زازاو بيدا اند اذر اميرز ذات ار بريزنتلي هير other royal fathers, distinguished members, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon all. Uh, let me first and foremost thank the organizers of this very august occasion. And also to thank His Eminence for supporting the organizers and ensure that this gathering is an excellent one. And also to thank Dr. Naif, Dr. Zakir Naif, for coming all the way from Malaysia to Sokoto to give us this lecture. I want to thank him and also to tell him that we are together. This lecture is a very nice one and we have got so many input and goodies that to we'll take back home. Your Eminence, like all of us know that the Sokoto, Kebi and Zampara are the same. So so good that give birth to Kebi and Zampara State. And also, you can't separate the Sokoto Calipet and the Gwandu. They are all the same. 
promoting Islamic that you have been doing for the benefit of Nigeria and globally at all. I want to assure you that anytime this type of occasion is to take place, the organizers should not hesitate to contact us so that we will contribute because anything that will make Islam to progress, we will not hesitate to put hands, our hands inside so that the aim and the objective will be achieved. Most of our people that came from various places to witness these very important lectures, I want to seize this opportunity to thank them and I pray that Almighty God should take everybody back to his burial some separately. Thank you and God bless all of us. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. With this, I have the honor to invite the representative of the chief host and the executive governor of Sokoto State, Dr. Ahmad Aliyu Sokoto FCNA, ably represented by the secretary to the state government for governor's speech. A'uzu billahi minash shaitani rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa sallallahu ala nabiyil karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Your eminence the Sultan of Sokoto and the President General Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs Your Excellency the Governor of Kebbi State and Comrade your Excellency, the representative of the governor of Kebi State, and my good friend, Mali Mamamuni Masamamudi, Your Royal Highnesses, the Emir of Zezo and uh, Mena, Kagara, and other prominent chiefs, the guest speaker, Professor Zakir Naib, the recipients of the awards, ulamas, guests, my colleagues, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. I primarily stand here to represent my governor, Dr. Ahmed Ali Sokoto, PhD FCNN, who is unavoidably absent and he had wanted to be in this important gathering, but because of other equally important engagement, he traveled and asked me to represent him. The governor is profoundly joyous to welcome everybody to this important gathering. On the occasion of Tens Sheikh Usman Amfodio week, year 1445, the repositioning and revitalizing of Islamic knowledge is one of the nine point agenda of His Excellency Ahmad Ali Sokoto. His belief is that of all the things and services government provide, education and pursuit of knowledge deserve much support. And the reason is obvious.